is February 4, 2004, and I'm interviewing Ms. Inez Moss for the Veterans History Project at the Atlanta History Center. Ms. Moss, would you please state your name and spell it? Oh, my name is Inez Moss. Inez is spelled I-N-E-Z. You really have to be over 70 to have that name. And the last name is Moss, M-O-S-S. My middle name was Riley when I was in the Marine Corps. Uh, what is your date of birth? Um, July 10th, 1922. Uh, what branch of the service were you in? I was in the Women's Reserve of the Marine Corps. We did not have a, a nickname. Uh, and what was the uh, highest rank that you had in the uh, Women's Marine Corps? I was a corporal. That was the highest rank. Uh, can you tell me about, before you joined the service, something about your, your life? Well, what you were doing, your family life? Yes. Um, I have two sisters and my parents. We lived in a small town in South Alabama, Andalusia. And I had great aspirations growing up. And um, by um, college, I went to Mary Washington my first year in Fredericksburg to see the world. Then I got serious and went to Baylor University at Waco, Texas. I was in pre-med at Baylor um, in November 1941 and December 1941. I was in the midst of exams when we had um, December 7th. And I just vividly remember that afternoon in the dorm. Um, it was very dramatic. And we had a dorm mother who was beautiful, gray-haired lady, whose son was in mission work for the Southern Baptist Convention. And I'm sure she had more concerns than we did, but she comforted everybody. And so that was my first real serious thought about the war. I was too much trying to get through my chemistry course. Were you married at the time? Oh, no. And uh, not thinking about it. And uh, when did you join the service? I joined the service in September 1943. And what made you decide to join? Well, in that uh, interim time, um, I had met a Marine, and I was very impressed with him. And we became engaged, and uh, so I decided um, uh, that I knew what I was going to do for life. And uh, I had um, uh, passed out when I was watching an operation, and I decided that that was not for me, really, so that I would um, plan on being a wife and mother. And uh, so um, what you have to understand the ten of the times to, for me to explain why I joined. Um, everybody was so patriotic and so into the whole spirit of the war, and um, my family had no boys. I was the oldest girl. And my mother said to me one day, if I were your age, I would want to join the service. I don't think she meant that as for me to take her up on it, but it started me thinking, and I thought that, um, that I would do that and be our family's representative. And um, of course, the, the uh, culture was so totally different. I wouldn't have given a thought about being afraid, or they wouldn't, they didn't. And uh, so they agreed for me to do that. And um, I wrote to Paul and told him I was thinking of that, but I don't think he took me seriously until after the fact, and I think it was a little shocked, but it was a wonderful experience. So Mr. Moss was already in the service at that time? He was already overseas. He was overseas at that time. So. Um, once you joined and you went off to basic training, can you tell me a little bit about where you went and what you did and what that experience was like? Um, another girl in my hometown um, joined at the same time that I did, and that was great. It was great for both families that we would be together. And uh, so we, um, I really went to uh, Birmingham to apply for, uh, um, for Navy, but Paul had said something about so much about being a Marine, so I, 
I decided I wouldn't apply for OCS. I would just go into uh, enlisted moment as a Marine. So uh, the two of us were, uh, had papers t together to report to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. And it was the first time I had seen Atlanta. We boarded a train in Montgomery and came through Atlanta and we had to change trains. And it was, it was a whole troop train of women going to Camp Lejeune. And we had to carry our bags, and I thought Atlanta was the longest, longest train station I had ever seen. They were, and the bags were so heavy. And that was my first impression of Atlanta and Union Station. And we um, got settled on the train, and from there to Camp Lejeune, it was a, like a big dorm party. It was just a lot of fun, and we sat up all night giggling and talking. as, as and. Fortunately, we had no idea what was in head of, ahead of us because uh, it was very serious business when we got to Camp Machine. And what was, what was the training like? The training was pretty tough. I, I grew up sort of on the soft side and never exercised. I'm not an outdoors person, and we were given very uh, strenuous boot camp and up early and exercising and drilling and uh, all, a lot of the things that the men went through. And then we were given all the, the history of the Marine Corps and a lot of academic subjects too. And I embarrassed myself terribly when we were out on drill one day and I, had, I saw a bluebird. It's the first time I'd ever seen a bluebird. And so I just kept marching towards the bluebird and looked around and the whole platoon was going the other way. <laughs> that, that, I never got over that. How did the men react to have, having all these women there? Well, they didn't, we really didn't uh, mix a whole lot with the men at that time. Our training was separate as I remember it. We did ha have um, some parties. I remember my, the first Marine Corps birthday, which is November the 9th, and we, that was a big dinner and dance, and um, that's about the only time I much remember the men being around in the mess hall. Other than the physical training, did you get any other specialized training? Not at that point. We, um, oh, that was a pretty full course, and I think that when I came home after boot camp on leave, I slept 16 hours. <laughs> that was very strenuous. After boot camp, I was sent to Lakehurst, New Jersey to take special training in areology, as it was called then, um, which was meteorology. And there were about eight of us who went from boot camp to um, Lakehurst, New Jersey and stayed together. We went from there to El Toro, California. And what did you do then in California? We were in the weather office, the all, weather. I was, all eight of us were. I was very fortunate. I think I was the only one who had not, had not received my degree. And there was just a lovely group of women from California, Ohio, one from Georgia. She claimed to be the daughter of a general. I never did check that out, but she said at Fort Benning. And I did run into her near Davison's one, one day, or a couple of years after we were out. The training at Location, New Jersey, was, was very intensive and very, very interesting, and particularly since it was close to New York City. Are there any particular stories that you remember from, from your training there, or any people specifically that you remember anything about? I wish I were better at remembering names. I know that um, when I was learning how to fill in a map um, for the weather office, the weather map, um, a general, a woman, Marine woman general, came and looked over my shoulders, and I just froze. I couldn't move. I, I, I was so intimidated. <laughs> I remember that. Then I remember a Christmas incident when we um, were entertained at the uh, Waldorf Astoria, and that may have been just my small group who was so adventuresome. The USO was wonderful during those days, and. Marine women were in the minority, so when the USO had a limited number of tickets, 
the waves couldn't qualify because of the Army women because of so many of them. So we would end up with the choice tickets. And we went to this one dinner that a men's club was having, and, and that was wonderful. I, I couldn't believe I was at the Waldorf Astoria at Christmas time. So now once, once you got to California, then what was your job? Well, we, we were sent to California in the last of February, and we uh, all worked in the weather office. The um, job specifically was to uh, code the maps. Every four hours, we would get information on the teletype from stations all over the country of what the wind velocity was. And so we would have one person read that, and the other person would make a notation of it. And then when it was all over, we would draw the lines to connect the isobars. And um, I, I have one of those maps in my possession, which is, I think I'll frame it one day. Um, we also sent the weather balloons up. You know, all of this is probably antiquated now. I'd love to visit a uh, meteorology office somewhere. But um, anyway, that was what we did. We were on duty 12 hours at a stretch, and four of us would be on duty at a time, the other 12. So it worked out that we had 24 hours off one week and 36 hours off the next week. So that liberty was, was a lot of fun on the coast of California. Where did you go? We went everywhere within the 12 or 36 hours. We went to San Francisco, went to Carmel, went to uh, Laguna Beach, was very close, and L.A. and Hollywood. Um, there were, my children can't believe that I hitchhiked, but in those days, there were platoons and places, for, platforms where you could hitchhike from the base and people would give you a ride to where you were going. And um, when you were in L.A., uh, close areas to you, there were also special places where you would go to get a ride back to the base. And there were buses also that came to pick you up. So the hitchhiking was not like you would do today. but. Um, uh, my buddies and I went to San Francisco a couple of times and went to um, um, Laguna a lot because it was only about 20 miles from El Toro. And uh, we went so much that we rented an apartment for a while. And um, so that, that was a lot of fun. We, we really had some interesting adventures. And how long were you there? I was there about 20 months. What was the time frame? Um, February, um, February, what was that, 44, till about um, May of 44. No, it had to be longer than that. May of 45. Um, I, I left El Toro because I was transferred by my captain fiance to Cherry Point, North Carolina, and it was it, he had a, a friend that helped him out with that. Maybe that shouldn't be on record, <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, I came, went to Cherry Point, North Carolina, and there I, I was severely reprimanded because I arrived with long hair, which was against regulations, and my punishment was to scrub down shower stalls for three days, and my father was just incensed that his daughter had to do that. But we, so I was at Cherry Point for three months. And why did your fiance have you transferred over there? He, he had uh, come home from Iwo Jima, he had to leave, and, um, was in California for a while, and um, he he was there about a week. Then he had to report to Quantico, and he was going to be an instructor in Quantico. But that's part of his story. But um, so he it was much easier to see each other on the East Coast, and so that's where we were when uh, VJ Day came. And but while I was in California. Um, some of the adventures we had, um, we went into um, L.A. one day and 
went to the USO and they were looking for, they had two tickets to opera to Carmen and Risa Stevens was the star and uh, there were only two Marines so she and I were chosen to get those tickets and so we were made up by Hollywood makeup stars and used as extras and they put us uh, in the window of the uh, scenery and told us to map the songs and not to dare sing. So I like to say that I appeared on stage with Risa Steven and Carmen, which was a lot of fun. Um, the, we would go out to um, the Sunset Strip and there was one particular restaurant and you would know it if I could. Well, we went to the, um, was it the Brand Derby, the restaurant that, and it was the first time that I'd ever seen B&B &B on the bill. And we, we were also puzzled, what in the world did we all that was B&B? &B? <laughs> it was bread and butter. We were so green, <laughs> absolutely, it was so naive. And um, the other restaurant, I, I can picture it, but I can't remember the name. But we would go there and order artichokes because you could spend an hour eating an artichoke and watch for celebrities to come in. And when you were making $66 a month, you didn't have a whole lot to spend on dining out. <laughs> so there, I know one time we met Jackie Oakley and there were others we met. We were there when we met the photographers who wanted to take our pictures. So that's why I had these glamorous pictures. And um, you can also see the long hair that was out of regulation. And so he, fixed us up with makeup and so I really didn't look like this but that and then he decided he would take one with a white blouse that he used for photographing the stars and that's how I got this one. So anyway that was one of my adventures and I think it was during that time that I developed my lifelong love of adventure. Um, so then I came to Cherry Point, and I must tell you, it was a very dull, boring place after Southern California. But the, the saving grace of that was that um, on weekends, I could catch a um, flight sometimes to D.C. Uh, Paul could drive down. He actually had a car. And we spent time in Washington. And our great memory together is being uh, together in Washington for B.J. Day and um, being on Connecticut Avenue. And uh, I know I was so proud because one of the flyover Navy boys was a cousin from my hometown. And it was, that was just an overwhelmingly emotional time to be there together. How did you find out about it? Oh, my parents, about him flying, being there? I don't or? know about when, when you found out about BJ, you know, victory. Oh, I, um, I was um, actually taking a nap in the Women's Marine Corps barracks when they came running through and yelling. Everybody was yelling about it and uh, so excited. And um, so um, it was fun that uh, I was visiting Paul at, at that time because we, they would not let a corporal be on the same base with the captain fiance. So I had to be at Cherry Point. And I, I guess they've changed that regulation now <laughs> but, uh, at that time. But then after VJ Day, I could um, uh, wear civilian clothes on leave. And so then I would, I bought some clothes. And when I visited him in DC, I would wear civilian clothes. Um, so that um, he could pull rank on me. You know. But that, um, was started the process of our getting out. And um, he had the hours because of his extensive duty. And um, he could get out before I could. And then they soon passed a law that if you were married, you could get out. So I decided I'd go through with the marriage and we would get out. <laughs> so then we came to Atlanta. And so back when you were in North Carolina, did you pretty much have the same job? No, I did not. I was a clerk typist. And um, it, was, it was fun to, 
type and read everybody's histories that they were processing out. You know, it was uh, it was interesting just to do that, and um, so that passed the time. And I look forward to weekends, but I was on a regular nine to five, five days a week. And you and, lived on the barracks the whole oh time? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Service. Lived in the dorm dormitories, right. And that um, one of the uh, women I was with in um, uh, El Toro and was really with from Lejeune on um, was a, a journalist for the um, paper. I think it was the San Francisco Times, one of the papers in San Francisco. And she had written a poem that she had published, and it was circulated. Uh, all over the California barracks and all. She was a widow, and so she, this poem was written about this, and the name of it is, I Painted on a Bright Red Mouth. And she um, later wrote this in a book. And um, my daughter lives in Washington, our daughter is, and we visited the Women's Memorial, and um, I bought, was able to buy a book written by Jane, and it's, it's a pretty popular book. So the Women's Memorial is a um, very touching place to go if you have in Washington. It's, it's right at the um, entrance to uh, Arlington. And uh, I also have, I'm very proud to have, um, be a charter member of the Women's Memorial Group, and that was given to me by my DAR membership. Um, they so uh, registered me as a member, charter member, before I was even aware of it, and then I bought this. This is a, a relief of the different uh, branch of women, different branch of service of the women. And um, what else can I tell you? So you decided to get married. Yes. You were still in the service, and was your fiancé, was he already out at that you said he was already out at that point? He was out and flew uh, to Cherry Point to pick me up, and we were going to meet my parents in Atlanta to buy a wedding dress, uh, which incidentally has been worn by six in the family, and uh, my trousseau. And uh, then um, we would go home, and we had I had to leave. We had about a week before we married. And then our honeymoon was spent going back to Cherry Point to get me out of service. And so after that week there, he had been, um, he had a job in Atlanta. So we uh, came to Atlanta to start our career. And then we got so busy in life that we didn't have much contact with any of our friends from the Marine Corps for a long time, as most people did. And you were just anxious to get on with your life. and. Um, he has an interesting story of telling you how he got back in touch with his group of Marines. And that's been a real joy to us for the last 15 years, is our reunions with them. And we are looking forward to going to the dedication of the World War II Memorial, and we want to take our whole family. And uh, so that's going to be an exciting time for us. Once you, what did, what did you do once you, once you came back? Well, once we came back, um, I really uh, was not particularly prepared to do anything. And uh, we had thought maybe we would go back to school together and I'd get my degree and he'd get his master's. But uh, the job looked so appealing and that we came here. And so I just tried to um, be a wife and then um, start raising a family. And that's what I did for quite some time. Um, our youngest, when our youngest daughter went to college, then I entered the real estate world and was there for 21 years. And um, so that's, you know, I had, we had three children. And um, so that's been the essence of my life. Uh, have you kept in touch with any of the people that you knew? No, I haven't. I wish that I had. Um, we, we just drifted apart, and uh, uh, I, when we visited um, California, I was just sick that I had not kept up. I had one friend there who had a home overlooking the San Francisco Bay, so um, 
but she was very interesting and and I enjoyed the women very much, but uh, we were all so s separated all over the United States. It, it was my loss. Uh, if I could just back up for, for a minute. When, when you were both in the service at the same time, and he was, uh, he was uh, overseas, how did, did you keep it? Were you able to keep in touch very well? Or how did you keep in touch? Well, the last two days we had spent reading his letters to me, and there were lots of them. Um, and sometimes he would say that he had received s several of mine at the same time because they would be slow getting there. And of course, when he was on operations, he, you didn't get any mail. And we were talking about it. He was wonderful to write, how much we did communicate. We really didn't have much time dating before we became engaged, so we got to know each other more through correspondence. and. Now it's so wonderful, the email and cell phones, that families can stay connected so. And where you would go, you know, maybe weeks without hearing anything. So, but we did write a lot. And of course you had the V-mails, uh, the little uh, free mail, and uh, we, did, we did write a lot. When he was in uh, Iwo Jima and those places, did you know where he was? Not always, not always. And I certainly didn't know when he appeared in San Francisco uh, when I had already been on four days leave and he surprised me by appearing and calling and saying, I'm, I'm back, I'm, I'm his. So I had to do a lot of rearranging to get some free time to be with him. But um, it, was, it was hard knowing I said, people today, you know, they're gone. 12 months and they think that is a long, long time, and it is, but two years is a lot longer. And so it was um, great to see him back and, and uh, not injured, so. Is there anything that, that, you, that we didn't talk about that you'd like to, any stories or anything that you'd like, experiences that you can remember that you'd like to include? Well, I know that they'll come to me uh, later, but I think I've talked a lot about me, and they would um, might involve Paul some. And um, uh, it was a wonderful experience, which I appreciate more every day, really. And in the last 10 or 15 years, in particular since we've been having reunions with the other Marines, who are just like brothers, they are more family than anything. Um, I have grown to appreciate that and, and they have been so swell to me and when the, the, they stand up in an honor they insist that I stand up too and I was like you're the ones who did the dirty work I was just roaming all over Southern California having a time and um, that was oh I do want to I can say that um, a year ago a little over a year ago um, I went with my daughter to her professional convention near Laguna Beach and, and El Toro. The El Toro Marine Base had, had been closed several months earlier. It is no longer there. I was disappointed at that. But we went back to Laguna Beach, uh, where I had been and uh, enjoyed so many afternoons there, and uh, went back to the restaurant that was our favorite restaurant. And they pulled out a menu from the time I was there and you could have abalone and two sides and a dessert for two seventy-five, and it was uh, it was amazing to find it. And it overlooks the Pacific. It's a beautiful, beautiful spot, and it was wonderful to be able to take her and share that experience with her. And while we were talking uh, in the restaurant, um, the server. We were telling she was telling him that I, that was my favorite haunt, and um, so. After, when we were getting ready to leave, a man at the table next to us came over and said, I couldn't help but overhear your conversation, and I just have one question for you. I was one of the fly boys, and I want to know if you're responsible for all that bad weather we had. <laughs> and that was a lot of fun. So that was a great experience to be able to go back. I never dreamed I would. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. It's been my pleasure.